Hey, buddy. Why are you running up and down the stairs? You won't sit still. All right, rainy day, but we have to do something. Let's go on an adventure. So today's plan, we are going to test the Necrophonic app, but I don't want to do it anywhere around here. We're actually going to get in the truck, drive 70 kilometers out to my family property, which I now own 72 acres of. We're going to do a little walk out into those woods, test the Necrophonic out there. And what I'm looking for is family names. My great grandparents, my great uncle, uh, my grandfather, any of the people that lived or worked that farm, I'm looking for them to come through. And that would prove to me, hey, you know, there's more to this. I mean, I know the thing says my name, my full name and other stuff. So I am a believer that there is more to it already, but I, I want to pin down. We're also going to count that dirty demon word. You know, this is the reason for the test. Uh, back here, that's all it says over and over and over. I can't stop it the box from saying demon. We go somewhere else in our other test, we didn't get that word once. So today is the follow-up test where we go somewhere else and with a purpose in mind, you know, I'm hoping they're going to talk about, uh, you know, what went on at the farm and I've got some questions about, uh, well, you'll see the questions when we get there. I've got some ideas. Grandfather should come through and tell me where that can of coins he hid when he was a kid was, hopefully. I've already shot today's video. We are gonna test the Necrophonic app again, but I'm traveling out to the property that I own, which was my family farm. I'm the fifth generation to own the property. Uh, I own half of it, my brother owns half, and I guess many, many acres have been sold off before that over the years. We only own 160 acres of the original farm that's left. Okay, so why I'm interjecting here before you even see the video is, because I'm asking to talk to family in this video, I want names, I want contextual, intellectual um, responses that make sense to prove that the Necrophonic app is connecting to the other side. And I asked to speak with family members. So my dad actually straightened me out on a bit of the story. I went and visited him after I did the session at the property today. And my dad w was saying this, in 1918, my great-great-grandfather, Seth Hazard, bought the properties out in Redbridge. I don't know how many acres, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of acres. He bought that property. He had a huge working farm. Um, his daughter was my great-grandmother. Her name was Della, or everyone called her Della. There's a rumor that that's not her real name. She went by her middle name, so... I'm trying to find that out as well because that's important. It may say her first name, right? We need to know that. Nobody knows that. <laughs> Nobody can tell me that. But I've heard from many people that that wasn't her real name. But everyone called her. My grandfather, my great-grandfather, called her Dell. Okay. So anyway, she was Seth's daughter. She got pregnant, apparently, from a farmhand. Probably a teenager. I don't know. She loved him. She wanted to run away with him. My great-great-grandfather, Seth, put an end to that. No, he sent the farmhand away. Now, he was a hazard. I'm a reed. Hazards and reeds were very good friends. Uh, they came from the Hamilton area, Stony Creek area. I don't know if my great-great-grandfather, Seth, was the first generation uh, to come to Canada. I don't know that. I'm, I'm so interested in this now, I want to do a bunch of research. Anyway, hazards and reeds were great friends. When my great-grandmother got pregnant, he sent for his friend, uh, Reed, to send his son up north. And he said, I will give you property and come and marry my daughter. And, sh and so my great-grandmother married my great-grandfather. We don't know the time frame, but uh, she was either had just had the baby or, you know, within a couple years, okay? That all happened. So I said to my dad, you're telling me great grandma married great grandpa, but not for love? And my dad's like, oh no, they loved each other. I'm like, hmm, I don't know. So we don't know the story there, right? Okay. So Della and Henry, that's my great grandparents. I never knew them. They died before I was born, probably 10 or 12 years before I was born. So I've never ever spoken with them, but they owned the 160 acre farm that Grant and I now own. Grant owns half, I own half. 
And uh, so I just wanted to throw those names out there. Seth and Hazard, my great-grandfather, uh, great-great-grandfather Seth, his brother's name was Ed Hazard. Apparently he was a strapping Irishman who always wore a white shirt and was known to get around with the ladies. Had many, many children <laughs> from different uh, wives, or I don't even know if they were wives, but uh, man, the things that get lost in, in the generations, right? I mean, that's only 100 years. So 1918 was when Seth moved and bought the property. We figure it was around 19, the late 1920s, early 1930s, when the house was built on the property that Grant lives on right now. Because that's when my grandfather was built. My grandfather was built in 1932. My great, my grandfather, Dan, was born at that property. So, there and they had, uh, there was Dan, Art, and Audrey. Uh, and Audrey, Aunt Audrey was the one who uh, apparently her father was the farmhand. So, I mean, lots of soap opera stuff going on here, guys. I just wanted to throw all that out there in case we hear any of those extra names. Listen and pay attention. I don't even know yet because I haven't analyzed any of the footage. Yeah, it's really coming down out here. We have to alter this plan just a little bit until the rain lets up. It's gonna be really wet in the bush. So the problem is this camcorder is not waterproof. The phone is. Um, so it does not like torrential downpour. But I think I have a plan. All right, you get out of my spot and I'm gonna get in the back of the truck. You go for a run. Go find that poacher. Ah, stinks like dog. Wet dog. Okay, so for, <laughs> for the immediate beginning of this video, we're gonna hide out here in the cap of the truck, out of the rain, and we'll, we'll run the uh, Necrophonic right from here. I am sitting on my property. That's the four-wheeler trail that goes uh, deep into my woods. And uh, I guess what we'll do is the first thing, you know, um, I've already mentioned in my prayer this morning that I wanted to talk to my family members and we'll see if they come through the app. So, Spirit Box, Necrophonic app. Uh, tell me about this property. You know, I want you to talk in context so that I know that I'm speaking to somebody from the other side and that it's an intelligent somebody, preferably a family member, and if they can say, you know, their name and other family member names and let us know a little bit about this property, that would go a long way in helping us believe that there's more to this app. Okay, I've got to interject here, guys. This blows my mind. I was not expecting this to come through the Necrophonic app. Three names given to me in 10 seconds of turning this thing on. Dan is my grandfather. Then the name Lee. I don't know the connection there. But then Seth. Seth was my great-great-grandfather. So, I mean... That's not a common name, so how is this app just coming up with these names? And I'm 100% sure that Lee somehow fits in this equation. I just don't know how yet. So to get more information, I called my aunt. She is a fountain of knowledge, uh, but you will not get off the phone in under two hours uh, when you call my aunt. So she was giving me all kinds of names and things, okay? She solved a couple riddles for us. She told me that my great-great-grandfather, Seth, was that was not his first name either. He didn't go by his first name. None of my family members used their first names apparently. His name was Robert Seth Hazard. Okay? His daughter, who was my great grandmother, who we said was everybody called Della or Dell, her name was actually Edna Della Gladys Hazard. 
Okay, so she didn't use her first name. My dad didn't even know that bit of information. Uh, what else do we have? Okay, so she also told me that Robert Seth Hazard, my great-great-grandfather, his wife, her name was Arvila Louisa Schaefer. I had no clue. Now, depending on some of the websites that she's gone through, Louisa might also be Louvenia. It was written as sometimes her middle name was Louisa, sometimes Louvenia. Now, her, her father was David Digby, and his mother was Louvenia. So, that makes sense. If Arvila, Arvila, Arvila? <laughs> These names. Arvila, if her middle name was Lovenia, that would have been her grandmother's name. So her middle name could have been passed down to her. Anyway, it's blowing my mind that the app is coming out with this and I'm only 10 seconds into analyzing it. And when this thing, when I analyzed that it said, good morning, son, I got all teary eyed. I don't know why. I'm like, it, they actually sent me a message. They sent their names and then it said, good morning, son. And I, I'm, you know, Lee, my aunt had a good idea. She said, well, that could have been somebody's nickname, Lily or something, something we just don't know. And that, when we figure out who Lee is, they didn't just say Lee for any reason. It was clear. It's there. That's a family member. I'm 100% sure between those other two names that we know were family members, they wouldn't just say Lee randomly. That had to be an unknown family member, unknown to me or my dad, more digging required, but that is going to prove that this app knows more than we do because Lee existed and I will find out who that was. Stay tuned. We have to, there, I have so much more to analyze in this.